Hello everybody, Evan here with another Moodle moment. We're going to take a look at some of the things you can do with glossaries in Moodle. Now if you're not familiar with how to use a glossary, you can see our past Moodle moment on how to set those up. Uh, glossaries are an example of a database within Moodle. Um, you basically have different fields such as the, uh, the term and the definition and such. Uh, but Moodle's already set up the uh, glossary database. You just simply add it and you're basically ready to go ahead and start putting in words. You can either have glossaries set up so that they're teacher only and students cannot add things to them. It's kind of a, an official glossary for the course. Or you can set it up so that it's an actual activity so that students are adding in definitions as well. I've got a course here and we've got a glossary within the course. Let's uh, open up the uh, settings of this glossary. And I'll take a peek at some of the important things here. I want to go under entries. One of the things that some people don't know is if you do allow um, students to go ahead and uh, provide entries here, you can change the approve by default to no. If you do that, then when, part when students, participants submit definitions, they don't go into the glossary until a teacher has approved them. The teacher needs to go in and say, yes, this is approved. Uh, you can also go in and allow comments on entries. Uh, this is similar to databases and, um, and other features within Moodle that allow you to go in and comment. Um, down here you can also use ratings. Um, and this includes both uh, having it just so that the teacher can do ratings or adding in additional permissions so that students can rate other uh, posts as well. So the allowing of comments, allowing of ratings is kind of a way to add in uh, crowdsourcing and community involvement within the definitions. Uh, if you allow duplicate entries, for example, you could have everyone go and submit a definition for a term and then the group could determine which one is the best. This is what I wanted to point out right here. Automatically link glossary entries, whether it's yes or no. Okay. If you turn it on to yes, let's take a look at this in action. Go back to our course. All right, so we have a course, and when we turn on the automatic linking, what it will do is it'll go into the glossary and it'll try to find any definitions that are put in there for terms that appear in the rest of the course. Okay, we have a term here, Moodle, um, and let's go ahead and add that to our glossary. And we'll just simply call it something like that. You see down here it says this entry should be automatically linked. If we check that, we do have the option of saying whether it's case sensitive or matching the whole word only, if you'd like, that can make it more specific, as opposed to it being um, uh, in this case, if the word appeared lowercase uh, m at the beginning, it would still work. And imagine the whole case if there was a word where Moodle was in the middle of a larger word, um, but we didn't want that word to be linked, we might check here to say match the whole case. I'll go ahead and click Save. When I do that, if I go back to my course, now these are linked. And you can see if you hover over it, the uh, definition will pop up. If you click on it, it'll pop up in a little pop-up box here. Okay, It's a way of contextualizing your course, adding in some additional information. We took a look at the Wikipedia uh, uh, filter in a past Moodle moment, so this is a similar one here. All right, now let's, add, uh, let's take a look at some other ones. What you want to do here is have your editing turned on. We're going to add in a block. And this is the random glossary entry block. This is a very simple block, not much to do with it. Once you add it in, you configure it. And you can say, which glossary do you want? We only have one glossary in this course. How many days before a new entry is chosen? I'm going to take one. You can make it alphabetical, uh, last entry, random entry, and such. And once you have saved it for the first time, then 
a random glossary term will appear over there. This is a good way if you know if you have students that are logging in kind of a regular basis and you want to reaffirm vocabulary um, rather than uh, require them to go into the glossary, which they might or might not do. Posting it here will get that will get those words in front of their eyes. Another block I want to add, and this isn't one the students will see. It's kind of like if you're familiar with the sharing card. It's it's more of a functional block for teachers than it is for students. But it's a brand new one, and we, we like it a lot. It is Export Glossary to Quiz. I'm going to click here. What this block is going to help us do is it's going to help us take all of those um, uh, glossary terms, and we're going to make quiz questions out of them. Okay. Same thing, I added it says Configure it. So I go in here to Configure. It says choose these. I'm going to choose from my mini glossary. And uh, I'll go ahead and pick random here. You do need to set what the maximum number of entries to export. I have um, always gone ahead and picked however many are um, in the total list. And then you can choose which type of question, which type of formatting you'd like. I'm going to leave them as multiple choice questions. Those work out really well. I'm going to click Save Changes. When I do that, it takes me back here, gives me all the parameters, and then says export. Now this is a little uh, different for a lot of people. This is actually going to export a file called an XML file. We're going to go through and how we're going to go through how that works. So take to uh, demystify it here a little bit. I'll go ahead and click on it, and click the export button, and I get this file XML. I've got another one already on my computer. This looks pretty scary. I'm just going to go ahead and close this. You don't have to worry about it. But you do need to know where on your computer those files download so that you can grab it. Okay, now that I've done that, I want to add in those questions into my question bank. So I'm going to go back to my course. I'm going to go under the course administration, down to question bank, and I'm going to go down to import. Once I've done that, I'm going to select the Moodle XML format. And I'm going to choose to import a file. I'm going to go into my downloads folder. You can see, I already did one. I'm going to do this latest one here. Upload that file, import. And then it's going to go ahead and list all the different uh, terms out there. Click continue. And voila, all of those have been added as questions to my question bank. And if you take a look in there, you can see that uh, folder has now been added under there. So if you create a new quiz, you can go in, you can grab um, different uh, questions from this term really quick and put them in. It takes you only a matter of minutes to make a quiz out of your glossary. Take a look at it. Let's preview one of those questions. And you can see, it takes the definition, uses the different terms in there. And there you have it. Those are the ways in which you can go and utilize your glossary and a few different, uh, uh, different techniques within your course.